Oh, welcome to Semper Sometimes with Benny. So um, this is going to be the first episode, and he, and he doesn't know this, so I'm, I'm telling you now. This is going to be the first episode of a new segment that's called The Suck. Um, so that is an acronym, um, which is SALTY. I already forgot it. Um, <laughs> this is uh, it's SALTY Untold Chronicles. Um, so my bad. This is the first time I'm even talking about it. Um, so this is going to be a segment just purely about recruiting duty. Um, talking about the good times, the bad times. Um, and I got that name. I was trying to get a name that was an acronym. And everybody always talks about how the how recruiting duty is the suck um, and how, you know, being in the suck together makes it easier. Um, and I was talking to Gunnery Sergeant Odenbrett. And I was talking to my wife. And um, together, you know, we switched some stuff back and forth. And that was the, the decision that I came to for an episode uh, for the segment, um, to the name of it. Um, so without further ado, Antoine, welcome. Um, tell us, you know, who, who is Antoine? Um, you know, now recent, you know, as of, you know, a couple of months ago, now Marine Corps veteran, um, unexpectedly, we'll get into that. Um, but who, if, if somebody was to ask, you know, who, who is, you know, Antoine, who, who would that be? Hey, so what's going on, uh, everybody? Um, like I said, I'm Antoine. Um, on the streets of Jersey, I'm known as Big Country. All right, so I'm from uh, <laughs> old Dirty South Alabama. Uh, grew up there all my life, man. I'm a pretty much a, a farmer by trade growing up. Um, we raised raised Black Angus cows. Uh, just a, honestly, man, a down to home person. You know, family guy, man. Been married for 10 years. Uh, two beautiful daughters. Um, you know, this is me you know, all day, every day. Word. So, um, so kind of the reason uh, for the audience who doesn't know who you are, um, you know, I, I mean, you only, and we were talking about this when we decided to do the episode like an hour ago. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to do an episode with you was because you have such a strong presence about you. But the thing is, we really only had like four or five conversations in the three years that we knew each other yeah. Yeah, and and you know and that was and that was something that that I admired about you because you you made your presence known when it needed to be known mm -hmm. and and I always and I never you know one of the questions that someone recently asked me was hey man can we talk about the good times on recruiting duty because you don't hear enough about them and yeah. one of the things that when that was brought up I immediately thought about you because every time I ever saw you you were laughing you were, you know, with your, your deep, you know, country accent and you were just talking about funny stuff where you were like, hey, dog, you got to listen to this. And like numerous times where me and you never really we never had a close relationship. But I remember you were always an advocate for me speaking. Like when yeah. I would start talk, when I would start talking, you would tell everybody, hey, shut up. You need to listen to him. Yeah. And and for me, it was awesome because I didn't even know you like that. So for us to not even have a relationship to the point where you respected me that much, even though me and you had really never even chopped it up, I was just like, mm -hmm. I need to know more about this dude. Because, you know, you're one of those people that like, I was talking to my boy Gunnery Sergeant Ujama about you. And I was saying that like, there's certain people that you meet and you're like, bro, I would have killed it on recruiting duty with that man. Like, right. I feel like. Like, I feel like in office, you know, I, we together, I feel like we could have done some crazy stuff. Um, but unfortunately, you know, God has different plans for stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, so I really wanted to have you talk about, you know, just, you know, you being a family man and, and just talk about, you know, did you enjoy recruiting duty? Um, you know, what was your thought process on the on the streets? Um, you know, did you did you hate it? Did you love it? Um, and just kind of share your experience with us. So starting off, man, and you're right. When I found out I was going to recruiting duty, I think at the time I was stationed in Albany, Georgia. I had three or four staff and CEOs who was private recruiters. And the only thing they told me, man, was the bad stuff off the rip. Yeah. Never heard any good things. You know, the only thing you hear you hear was, oh man, it's gonna be long hours, bro. You know, oh man. You're not going to see your family, you know, this, you know, this and that. So when I got out here, first thing I wanted to do, you know, me and my wife just discussed it, you know, I was like, hey, you know, 
you already know the game plan, you know, is, is for me to, you know, hopefully get promoted. That, that was my whole reason, you know, coming out here on the streets. And my mentality was I always been the person to grind, you know, so, so my mind, we already knew, I right, I need to grind this first year, grind, yeah. learn, I need to learn, hit the ground running. <clears throat> So even even in recruiter school, man, um, I don't know if you remember Sergeant White. Um, uh, she was at Northwest. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Her. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I really found out about you know uh, Northwest where I was going. Um, she was at recruiting school with me. I didn't know that she was already on the streets. Um, she got the chopping it up and. So I'm like, oh, where you going? Oh, I'm going to Jersey. What station? Northwest. Oh, I'm at Northwest. You know, and yeah. kind of find out, no, it, was, it was actually a pretty good station, pretty decent station. But man, <clears throat> my driving force out here, man, honestly, my family. I wouldn't have made it, honestly, the three years that I made it without my wife and my kids, man. Yeah. Uh, by far, one of the hardest hats that I held in my 11 years of being a Marine. Yeah. But it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's one of those jobs, man, where it's, it puts you on a pedestal to really see, you know, can you handle it, you know, or, or what you made of, you know. Anybody can look good as far as being in a unit. But when you take that one person and put that joker by itself, you get what I'm saying, you know, that's when you know we're going to know yeah but it, was, it was a grind man it was a grind um i remember my first after my first week um i think uh we worked monday through saturday and i get a phone call from at the time saw him base he was he was the a gun when i got there uh sunday morning it's like 10 o'clock he was like yo where you at I was like, man, it's Sunday, you know, when my home sleep. <laughs> he was like, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, work. big homie. <laughs> Get to work, dog. Oh shit. Man, so man, it was it was hard, man. You know, uh, I told my wife after after that first week, I think first two weeks, I was like, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. You yeah. know, but you know, she she stood there with me. She was like, "No, nah, you can do it. You can do it." But I would say, out of my three years, man, from the time I started to the time I ended, I think for me, what what gave recruiting duty joy and pleasure for me was freaking out, man. It wasn't really at the end of the day. It wasn't about me. Yeah, it's not about me, man. Yeah. My job was to give somebody else the opportunity that Sarndale gave me uh, pretty much 11 years ago. You yeah. know, it's like these kids, man, giving them, man, opportunities. Yeah. You know, and you know, man, kids come from different, you know, backgrounds and things like that, man. It's about making an impression, get your name out there. You know, uh, uh, my dad always taught me, man, your name means something. That Turner name means something. Sarn Turner name means something, you mm -hmm. know, and it's good, man. I, I, if I had time, I probably would read the, a message one of my mom sent me probably two, three weeks ago. She found uh, uh, like a report her son wrote about me at school, you know, um, and it pretty much explains how I pretty much turned the whole life around. Yeah, man, it is it's really inspirational. Um, so what I actually did was I actually printed it off, man, and I got it on my vision board in my room. So when I wake up, that's the first thing I look at. You know, yeah. so it's, it's about giving back, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's, and that's the thing, man, like talking about what you're talking about, like you said from the jump, you know, hey, I came in on the streets, I was already a grinder. You know, I was already somebody who did that. And that's the thing about it, you know, and, you know, is that, like you said, this duty, it exposes people. Mm -hmm. And but you know what the craziest thing is, is that even though people get exposed, people hide the ones that are exposed. Mm. You know what I mean? 
So like, and I say that because like I had a recently, you know, this is going to be a topic of discussion in, in a later episode, but I feel like it's kind of coming into this right now, talking about the exposure type thing is that, so I got this dude who hit me up um, on Facebook and he's out in some, some RS, you know, out somewhere. And um, his boss, literally, he went on leave because he was having uh, his, his wife, you know, was having some stuff going on. He was taking care of his family. Yeah. And um, he went on leave. And before he went on leave, his his boss said, hey, let me get all of your new working applicants. Let me get everybody that you're working so I could take care of them while you're gone. Now, mind you, at this time, I'm like, oh, I'm hearing the story. I'm like, yo, that's dope. Like, your, your mm-hmm. boss is taking care of you. He's going to take care of you, right? Come to find out, this dude comes off leave. And his boss contracted all of those kids under other people in the office. Wow. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. and the thing is, is that, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I started this, 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 um, you know, this podcast is because there's so much shit that happens on the duty that nobody wants to talk about. Mm-hmm. There's so many people that should never have been staff in CRCs. Mm-hmm. So many people should never become 8412s. And it's like, bro, like we need to do a better job of who we're putting in a leadership position. Because then when you do stuff like that, now, mind you, I don't know the whole story. I don't I don't know what the staff in CRC was doing or why he was doing it. Maybe there was a bigger reason behind it. Yeah. But, you know, you look at it and they are like, bro, first of all, you're causing you're going to cause animosity in that office. You're going to cause those recruiters to be like, yo, why is this even mine? Why'd you give it to me? Then you're going to cause pull attri- an issue with pool attrition because now that kid's recruiter isn't really even his recruiter. And like, you know, just talking about that, it's like, you're right. When it, when you talk about the fact that, Hey man, you gotta be you, your name stands for something. And at the end of the day, all that matters is it's not about you. It's about the kids. And I think that's the biggest thing that people fail to think about. People get so caught up in, you know, the mission, people get so caught up in the awards or being successful or promotions that they're more worried about a shipper and NWA a contract than they are this kid mm-hmm. and this person's livelihood, you know, and, and, and reality of it, man, how many times have you been in a position to where, you know, the state's like, Hey, this kid got a ship right now. And you're like, bro, he can't, he ain't ready. Like his, he ain't, he ain't ready. And then no. it becomes that, you know, and, and that's the thing too, is that where no one gives a damn about that. You know, mm-hmm. no one cares about that. It's like, Hey, we need a shipper. We'll deal with that later. And it's like, but no, because if that kid isn't now, mind you, I've been there where the kid's not ready or he thinks he's not ready mentally, but he really is. And he needs that push. But then there's some dudes who literally were never ready, yeah. should never have left. And now that dude who made a decision to change his life now becomes an MCRD discharge because we needed a shipper. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where, it, and that's where we fuck up. And I say this as we, because I've been there. I'm not going to say that I never made decisions that I had to, you know what I mean? Sure. And that's the thing. And that's the thing that we forget about is it becomes more of a business than it does an actual world of like, hey, bro, these dudes are making a decision to serve their country. These dudes came into the office, whether you got them there, or you found them or whatever you did, you made them a promise that you were going to take care of them. When you sat down with them and you had these conversations with them and these words with them. And that's why I get so tight when I hear stories about like, oh, my, my boss contracted this kid to this dude. It's like, bro, you sat kneecap to kneecap with this dude and y'all had a relationship. Mm-hmm. That that kid can't be nobody else's kid, bro. Mm-hmm. Like that kid cannot be anybody else's kid because you guys have a relationship that you formed. You formed a relationship with his family. You formed a relationship with his girlfriend, his dog, his cat, whoever, like his guidance counselor. Like you, you spent all of this time on one individual and now for him to be given to somebody else, it's like, bro, what are we doing here? You know, and, and again, you know, talking about the same thing, because I've had that happen in the past where like, I remember it was in Jersey, I'm not going to say their name, but you know, somebody, a recruiter effed up and it was like some stupid shit. Like the recruiter effed up the paperwork and the gunny was like, Hey, switch called Meps and was like, Hey, switch his name, give it to this dude. And it's like, what did that teach him? That didn't teach him anything, bro. That just got that dude mad. He's not going to work for you. He's not going to want to push for you. And now that and when that dude's sitting at MEPS, realistically, the MEPS liaison, when he's going through the paperwork, is supposed to say, Hey, man, who's your recruiter? Mm-hmm. 
And now that if that kid finds out some way, shape or form that, wait a minute, why is my recruiter not on my paperwork? Thanks. Now. And then on top of that, when the kid goes to boot camp and if he allegates or if he says something, it's like, wait a minute, he's saying that you said this, but his recruiter is this guy. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, what the hell are we doing? And again, it's, 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 you know, it's craziness because the thing is, is that these are things that happen in every, I, I've realized it's not just Jersey, it's everywhere, everywhere. but nobody wants to say something. Mm-hmm. And, and I was just talking to the dude who hit me up about it. And mind you, I'm out of the Marine Corps. I'm not, well, I'm, I'm a reservist, but I'm off recruiting duty. I don't even know his RS. I don't even know the people I can't make change. I can't help. Right. So he was like, well, what would you do? And I was like, well, first of all, if my boss was giving away my contracts, I would be have the first step in this whole entire situation is I'd be having a closed door conversation with my boss. Like I'd I'd be like, bro, what is going on? Like rank off door closed, just me and you, or I would bring it. I would at least bring my a gunner. So I had proof of what I said. So I have somebody on my side just to see what's going on. And then if he doesn't change, I'm going to go to the ARI. Then I'm going to go up the chain. Right. So I tell him that this is what I would do. He's like, bro, I did all that. I'm like, so, and it's still happening. He's like, yeah. I'm like, so what happened when you went to the RI? He's like, oh, well, when I went to the RI and I talked to the RI, the RI, he's getting out the Marine Corps, he's retiring. So he said, hey, we'll just put in a trouble ticket. We'll fix it. Yeah. And it's like, no, bro. Because at the end of the day, it's about principle. And it's mm-hmm. about the, the honor of the office. It's about all of these things. And now you're, me- you're mixing up all of these things that should never have been mixed up. And, and at the end of the day, you know, the parent of this child, whether the kid's 28 years old or not, that kid's family is going to feel some type of way when you're because not. You're yeah, like it's 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 freaking it's messed up, man. And, and it's like and again, it, people get exposed, but no one does shit about the exposure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like and you've seen this, you know, I know you have when recruiters go a whole year without writing contracts. And they don't do anything about it. And, and it's like, and then it makes your life harder as a father. Like you got two, two daughters at home you're talking about. You're working seven days a week and you got somebody in, I don't know about your office, but you got somebody in the office or in the RS that ain't holding up this shit. And guess yeah. what? They know they don't have to hold up this shit because you got them. Yeah, because A gonna got to gotta write more contracts. You yeah. get one, you know, at the end of the day, that, you know, it's, trust me, man, I had this same conversation with some of the same, the same recruiters pretty much in my office, the yeah. same thing. And, and it's, it, honestly, it's not right to the applicants, you know, because we look at it so much as the business mindset of, you know, just like you saying, especially a good example, man, with the, the shippers. The shippers, we con- contract guys, we tell them, kneecap, kneecap, hey man, if you commit to me, I'm gonna give you 200% of my time to get you where you needs to be. Not me personally, I'm talking about me. I have recruited kids that stay all the way out in Newark. So let's say Saturday morning PT started at, I think at the time, seven o'clock in the morning. I had at that time, eight kids I had to pick up every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for PT. Especially on Saturday mornings, I had to leave my house at 2.30 in the morning to go pick up these kids, to get them to the office for PT, do PT, and then drop them all back at home. Was I tired? Yeah, I was tired. Some Fridays, we we used to have uh, all hands on Fridays. Be dead tired, get home. Wife and kids, you know, they still want to spend time. You know, so the, the day is already gone. But I tell them all the time, man, it's not about me at the end of the day. It's not. It's about y'all. So you mean yeah. I'm doing all this, putting in all this time with these kids. And next thing you know, we're going to ship them. But it's not even ready just to fill a hole. That's stupid. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. Why? We're going to send that man down there to fail. That's yep. a damaged product if you want to look yeah. at it. Business stand for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a damaged product. Well, and that's the and that's the thing too. And then and and you know, it's the thing that they don't talk about. And and I think that's why the Marine Corps and, and listen, I'm not 8412. I'm not like some higher all being, but these are just common sense things that I think about. 
like you're talking about. I'm not saying a person is a product. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this. If I tell you, like you just said, hey, man, I'm going to put 200% of my time in. I'm going to do everything I can. And then all of a sudden, the CEO or whoever comes down and says, hey, bro, I need a direct shipper tomorrow. I mm-hmm. don't give a damn. He got to go. Okay, I get it. No one wants to miss shipping. That's not okay. That's how people get fired. I get that. But the reality of it is, is that say that kid is not ready and he goes to boot camp and he fails miserably. Num- or say he doesn't even fail, but he gets pushed through and he makes it. That's going to change his whole entire trajectory as a Marine, as a person, as a man. You lost me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. We good. All right. I don't know what happened, but um, like, so what was the last thing you heard me say? Uh, about the, 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 the shipper kid. Yeah. So like, if you, if you ship this dude who you told you're going to take care of, you're going to put his time in. And I understand we have, we have things that we got to deal with. Right. But if this kid goes to boot camp, if he fails, now he's going to come out of the Marine Corps mm-hmm. and he's never going to tell anybody that he failed. He's going to say the Marine Corps failed me. They lied to me. They mm-hmm. did this. I was just a number. And now, mind you, everyone's going to call that dude a B or whatever. But the reality of it is that he's not lying. He's not lying. And, the, and, and now you're putting that person back into your AO. And then you wonder why it's a problem to get kids to join. Yeah. Because they all know that one dude, and it's like a review. You know, if one person goes on Yelp about a restaurant and puts one bad review, even if there's 99 good reviews, that one review, people are going to be like, oh, I don't know. Thanks. And that's the, and that's the reality of it. And then say, say the same kid doesn't get out. Say he doesn't fail. Say he actually makes it through. Say he makes it. He becomes a Marine. They push him through a boot camp. That's going to change his whole career and his trajectory and where he could have been. And then, guess what? When he becomes a recruiter, if he stays in long enough, he's, he's going to say the same thing. Oh, it was done to me. It's not a big deal. We could do it again. And it's this vicious cycle because we're putting people in a place it shouldn't have been. And then we wonder why, you know, the suicide rate's so high or we, all of these different things. It's like, bro, like you got recruiters, not going crazy here, but there's people that shouldn't be in the Marine Corps that are in the Marine Corps. Thanks. And it's like, it's like, bro. And again, it's all because we needed a shipper. We needed yeah. a contractor. And again, I understand the Marine Corps has numbers. I understand recruiting duty has numbers, but we begin to forget about the fact that it is not a business and that it's a personal thing personal. that we're doing here. And, you know, so one of the things that I want to talk about because we're kind of getting into it is you, you're a father, you're on the duty, you're working all these hours, you're going to work at 2.30 in the morning to go pick up these kids for PT, you're PTing with them, you're getting home late. How are you managing all of this as a husband and as a father? Ooh, man, good question. Time management plays a part. You know, you gotta, man, get the time in as you can, you know, um, especially when you're coming home late um to make 200 phone calls you know uh trying to get appointments you know it's 11 30 you walking through the door you know uh, your kids are already asleep you know your wife you know having you haven't seen her man in probably two three days she gonna want to talk but nah baby nah, not really in the mood just in the third you know it it takes a toll it does it takes a toll man but you got to make the time, you know? So I used to tell my wife, you know, uh, at my old office, we used to have a little Chinese restaurant right, right pretty much beside us. All right, so every time she used to go out, you know, go shopping and stuff, she'd swing by, you know, swing by the restaurant, pick me up something to eat, or she'd bring the kids by the office, hey, just for me to see them or to see her. You know, it might be two minutes, it might be 10, you know, but, the point is, you know, you just, you trying to make time, you trying to make time, you know, um, even I give an example when I, I think I wrote my first, my first bet, I wrote my first bet at the time my boss was, uh, I think it was that's on then at the time. And he gave me an ultimatum, you know, well, my ultimatum was pretty much, Hey man, you write this bet. You know, I'll let y'all, I think we was going to, uh, my wife and kids were going to 
Broadway to go see, um, I believe it's Aladdin on Broadway. Hey, you write this back. You can go to Aladdin on, on Broadway and spend time with your kids. I think he gave me like a 72, you know, so I hustled, wrote it, you know, got a chance to spend, spend that time with my wife and my kids. Um, you gotta enjoy the, the small wins too, man. Every little time off that you have, don't really spend it by yourself. If you got a family, you know, try to spend some time with your wife and your kids. Like I said, it might be five minutes, man. Sometimes it might be an hour, you know, but it's it's very, very hard. You know, it got to the point too, to where my wife used to call the office and she would tell my boss, she was like, hey, I need my time. And he would look at me, <laughs> he'd be like, Turner, go home. And I would get my stuff and I would go home, you know what I'm saying? But uh, try not, I try not to let it get to that point, you know, too, too much, you know what I'm saying? But you got to try to keep that balanced, man. Got yeah, you. and that's, and that's an, I guess, you know, I recently spoke about that on the episode um, with, with uh, Gunny O, because, you know, I, f- I feel like a huge part of that is the staff and Sue I see being mm-hmm. the one looking down and saying, like, listen, bro, you've already given me too much. Go home. Mm-hmm. And and people don't people don't do that. And the thing is, is and some some do, some don't. But then you have the guys who are like, nah, bro, Turner's my workhorse. I can't let him go home. And, and then there's the other guy who's like, but what if you did let Turner go? Home? What if you told Turner, hey, man, you know what? You did enough today. Go home get refreshed and come back, you know? And, and that's the thing is we forget about that. We forget about, again, it's the same thing. We, we forget about the people business. We forget about the reality that, you know, Marines have lives, they have things going on. And that's why you have issues with alcoholism, you know, with suicide and, you know, you being in Jersey, like, bro, we had a lot of people get kicked out of the Marine Corps. You know, we had suicide, we had alcoholism, yeah. you know, and there was so much stuff going on. And I don't want to, and the craziest part about it is that people feel like none of it matters because this stuff just happened, but we carried on as business as usual, Mm. you know, like all this stuff happened. And then the same day, the next day, it's like, Hey bro, let's go. You know, like, yo, like, are we still people? Are we still Marines? Like, and that's the thing about it, you know? And um, so one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about as well was like, so your career, your time on the, on the duty. Do you have any any good memories? Do you have any times that you were like, "Wow, it was a phenomenal time"? Like, I, I I loved it. Like, what was the good parts about it? The good parts, man, for me, seeing my kids, man, the seeing them come back from boot camp, you know, uh, seeing their their parents come out of office, you know, hey, what's on turning? Hey, Santi, man, thank you. You know, uh, thank you for for helping them. You know, saving them. Man, I see the transformation. You know, uh, I would say not not ne- not necessary the accolades. You know, uh, but for me, is it's just how should I say? It was worth the while seeing the work that I put in. You know, seeing the guys when they come back, the the females when they come back. Um, hearing their stories, you know, looking on Instagram, seeing where they at, Spain, uh, uh, Cali, you know, Germany, you get what I'm saying? Um, to me, man, that's that's really the main thing that really hit home for me. Because like I said at the beginning, man, it's, it's really not about me, man. You know, um, my time my time is is done. I used to tell them, tell them, be better than me. At the end of the day, regardless if you stay in four years, man, or 24 years, be better than me. You guys are supposed to supersede me just like my own kids. You know, that generation needs to keep going and going and going. And yep. it's, we say it a lot, but it's, but it's true. Out of all the kids I recruited, who knows? I probably just recruited the next Saw Mission Marine Corps. Hell, yep. I recruited a motor T guy that replaced me. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But yeah. hey, hey man, that's what it's about. You know, I yeah. a lot of time in you guys. You, yeah. told, you gave me a word, hey, Saw Turner, this is what I want to do. Get me there. I told yeah. you, 
I'm going to get you there. At the end of the day, it's going to be up to you to go through that door. And then seeing the transformation, once you come back, that's my job well done. That's showing me that all these hours that I put in, all the phone calls, all the tracking out documents, all the time of me going to the school, making sure you staying in school, you on top of your grades, you ain't doing dumb jump. You know, that's my prize at the end. Yeah. That's it. That's and it's, it. It, you know, it's talking about this right now. It's something that I never really thought about. You know, with you getting out of the Marine Corps, you, how many, how many kids do you, did you put in the Marine Corps? Man, it was, had, Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. All right. Yeah, I'm in internet froze. So I, I asked how many kids did you put in the Marine Corps? Close to 65, 70 kids. All right. So, and I, like me too, and then the amount of people that I helped with, you know, while I was on uh, as a staff in UIC. So I think about it now that you're talking about it, and it's like, bro, you got to think about it. You put 65, 70 people in the Marine Corps. That's a little bit of Sergeant Turner everywhere. There you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and it's something that, again, talking about that, like people forget that, you know, people forget that what we're putting in the Marine Corps is what's going to come out of the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. you know? So when, you know, when people talk about, you know, the suicide rate, alcoholism, they talk about, you know, rape, they talk about all these different things, you know, and you have people who you see like in Jersey, you know, there's people who are getting kicked off the duty for doing stupid shit. Mm -hmm. And you think about it and you're like, yo, how did that person get here? Mm -hmm. Why did that per And mind you, we don't know what people are going to end up doing one day. You know, who knows what we could have. Maybe we put someone in. We thought they were a phenomenal person. Reality of it is, is they weren't. We don't know. But that's why it's so important that we find the right people, that we're putting the right people in the Marine Corps, because those are the people that are going to keep the Marine Corps alive or they're going to be the people that infest the Marine Corps. Yeah. So, and, and I think that's part of what people forget about, like when they think about it and they sit down and they're like, all right, I have to go on recruiting duty. Everyone has this negative connotation, but nobody thinks about the fact that you are literally creating the next Marine Corps. Like you're the one that's creating the leadership traits, the lineage, you're the one that's creating the history. And without you as a recruiter, they wouldn't be there for the drill instructor. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be there. There's nothing that, you know, they wouldn't, there would be no recruit to have been taught. And, you know, I think that's a huge part of it that we forget. And we forget that again, we're putting a product into, you know, a product line where we're supposed to help mentor them, guide them, help, you know, mold their mind and help teach them and, and help just be better. And we forget about that. And they become just another cog in the wheel or just another person. Hey, bro. I lost the shipper figuratively. Uh, it's a cog. Hey, let me just get a new cog to replace it. I need that dude there. And it's like, nah, man, that's not what it is. Um, so I guess one of the other questions I would, I would ask you is that, you know, I, I feel like you could fr more freely talk now that you're out of the Marine Corps. What were some of the, the issues, the heartache, the bad stuff that you dealt with while on the duty that made you, despise it or it made you just I know that you were talking earlier when you were on the phone you know that there was a time where you were in a really dark time in your life while on recruiting duty so if you don't mind can you kind of talk us through that um and then give us any advice for anybody who's maybe going through that same time right now so I would say man uh my situation was <laughs> it was crazy man been, been on the duty Close to three years, successful, very successful. I think I've written seven bats. I was the A gunner, um, successful in two sectors. Um, and come to find out it was, it's pretty much like, hey man, thanks for playing, you know, but we can't keep you, you know. Um, but when I found that out, man, I was very, very distraught, you know, 
very, I was angry, very, very angry. Cause you know, I was like, man, you know, and what I'm doing here, I just wasted three years of my life. You get what I'm saying? Wasted time away from my wife, my kids, birthdays, anniversaries. You get what I'm saying? Um, uh, my dad at the time was dealing with prostate cancer back in Alabama, couldn't go see him. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of things was compounding, you know, uh, kind of felt, man, betrayed. The main thing, I felt betrayed. I'm like, man, you know, y'all can't keep me. I'm on recruiting duty, you know, from a certain person in the high echelon once came to my office and told me, he says, hey, Sean Turner, if I let you leave Northwest, Northwest will fail and won't make mission. You get what I'm saying? You know, but I felt like there was no actual pool to keep me. You know, I think the only issue, the only thing was they told me, well, if you can't be a 12, then that's, that's pretty much it. You know. Um, so very, very man, very distraught, man. Um, but I would say the good thing about it, man, I had a good team, um, a good new boss at the time. He took me aside, talked to me, um, done some real good mentoring, man. Uh, he made a phone call. Once I let him know what was going on, took me off mission right then and there. Said, go take care of your family. You get what I'm saying? Uh, so I would tell you, honestly, man, some word, word of advice to the to the guys, I would say, especially new, new recruiters that are coming out on the street. Don't get so caught up, man, in what they tell you because at the end of the day regardless man if if you the new kid on the block or you smoking joe blow you get what i'm saying everybody at the end of the day is expendable and believe it or not we are that cog in the wheel you get what i'm saying um but have a plan have a plan uh, uh set goals set goals to make you successful uh, speaking of going off what, what you said earlier about, um, I, th I think the first time me and you actually met and talked was at uh, uh, the ball, the Marine Corps ball. And I made a point to come talk to you because I remember, remember you from my first all hands. And I was scoping out the scene right then. And what got me hooked was I was seeing everybody coming up getting bats and bats and bats. I think at that time, you, I think you had probably two or three that you got that day. I was like, dang, yeah, that's what I want. And I set goals for myself. Starting then, I said, all right, my first goal I want to hit, I want to write a bet. Bam. I think my second month on, I got here in October. Yeah, I think I, I got here in October of 2018. I wrote my first, my first bet in what, November. Bam. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. My second goal, I said, I want to be an A gunner. I worked my tail off. I grind. Bam, became an A gunner. My third goal, I wanted to get promoted. Hey, I went to two meritorious boys. Hey, didn't work out. That's fine. You get what I'm saying? But I made steps to make me successful, if that makes sense. So advice I would say, man, regardless of what station that they're at, good and bad, man, you got to take the bad with the ugly, you know, just like we do in the regular Marine Corps, you know, pick and choose, you know, what to take from each and everybody. Find out what works for you. That's it. Like, like for me, majority of the, of the kids that I recruited was not even my skin tone. And, and when I first started, it kind of messed with me because I was like, man, I can't even track my own kind. <laughs> yeah it, it did man i was like man what's going on you know but i had to sit down and think about it what made me attract or what attracted them to me and it's just like you said it's my personality at school yo what's, what's going on big dog hey man what's up so T, what's going on wasn't nothing marine corps related just chilling just being me you get yeah. one of them. and it kind of manifested it blossomed out you know, you get what I'm saying to everybody. Hey, man, you got to come meet Santee, 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 Santee. 
you know, but pick and choose, man, what works for you. Make it work, grind, you know, uh, 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 do what you got to do. Get out of the, and I think all RSs, A gunners and bosses need to get out of their mindset of staying at work, just stay at work. No, man, we need to stop it. That's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You got what you need, get out, go home, decompose. Bro, even if you don't got what you need, there needs to be a time sometimes where it's like, yo, shut the door, shut the doors, everybody leave, everybody go home. Yeah. And it, and it sucks because, you know, if you have this, we can have this discover. I can have it. This always comes up in every episode that I do with recruiting duty. It always comes up quality of life. And you talk to 8411s about it. You talk to 8412s about it. And even 8412s are like, you know, you know, do this, do that, do this. And the reality of it is, man, is that there's never going to be quality of life until you say, Hey, listen, this is what's going to happen. Because yeah. if you, because the thing is, is that if you keep saying, Oh, we'll work towards it, we'll get there. We'll work towards it. We'll get there. It's like, no man. Cause you're not, we don't believe it because we've never been there already. How many mm -hmm. times have we heard you say, we'll get there. How mm -hmm. many times does the new year start and you say, Hey, we'll get there. No. And that's why it's a hard topic of discussion because like, and I've said this before, is that like, say you look at the army, right? The army, they only work eight to five. Mm -hmm. They are literally mandated by the freaking top tops that you will only work eight to five and you will not work Fridays past this time and you will not work Saturday and Sunday. The problem though, is that now what does that breed? That breeds laziness, that breeds lack of contracts. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's a hard thing to do because the reality of it is, is if you tell everybody, hey, these are your new working hours. Well, now, no matter what gets done in between that time, well, then I'm going to go home regardless because that's what you said, right? So that's now that's why it's so hard to be, that's why it's so hard to have it. But again, I think from the, the top down, you know, and, I, and, and talking about real, reality and you were there during this time, you know, there was a certain someone who came out of nowhere and was like, hey, listen, I'm the new head. She's here. And the staff and COICs are going to be in charge of your offices. When you want them to go home, let them go home. I'm not going to care. I don't give a damn. And that worked. And then all of a sudden that changed. And he was like, hey, if you want to send your Marines home, call me. And it's like, bro, like, why do I got to like, why are you not allowing me to deal with my own battle space? Facts. And that's and that's the problem when you begin to. And that's the thing where there's and that's the thing where. You know, if you want to talk about having a healthy office and you want to talk about fighting together in your fire, in your fire team and your fighting hole, the reality of it is, is that if your Marines don't believe in their staff and COIC, then you will never have a freaking working office. But if your Marines, literally, if, I, if I'm working hard as fuck for you and you come out to me and you're like, hey, bro, bro, go home. Mm -hmm. I got what, I, whatever you're doing right now. Stop doing what you're doing. I got it. I'll deal with it. Mm -hmm. or an egg gunner, you know, and that's another topic of discussion too. You know, there's so many people who, if you ask them, you know, Hey man, there's people who come on the duty and within two or three months say, yo, I will never be an egg gunner. I don't want it. And they literally have that mentality. And it's because of why, well, one, most a gunners don't even know what the fuck their job is Two, <laughs> Most a gunners don't even know why am I an egg gunner? Because my mm -hmm. staff at CYC does everything. He doesn't even teach me what I'm supposed to do, or they don't even feel like their billet means anything because of the way that they're talked to, because of the way that they, they're presented. So most people are like, bro, fuck being an A-gunner because my decisions or the things that I want to do or that I believe should be done aren't yeah. even taken into account. So why am I even going to be an A-gunner? True. Or, or hey, man, sad to see then write two contracts. Hey, Gunner, you got to cough up. Yeah. Hey, yeah, exactly. And that's the and that's the thing is because, you know, it becomes this thing about taking care of people and all this different stuff. And it's a it's all dude. I'm telling you, man, I, I will 100 to percent to the end of my life say that there is nothing like Marine Corps recruiting duty like 
there is nothing like it. But you know, but what's crazy though is like I work on I work in recruiting for a school now, mm-hmm. and and I'll find myself not stepping on other people's toes. Like if I, you know, if I, if I can't make an interview or something, because now I'm, I'm bro, I, I work eight to five, bro. And at five o'clock, I turn my phone off. I turn my laptop off. So if somebody's like, Hey, I got to meet with you at six o'clock. I'm like, no, bro, I went home at five. So yes. I'll call somebody else and I'll be like, Hey, you're working late tonight. Do you want this person? And I'll just hand it off and hand it off. And I think a huge part of it is that I feel like when, and this is why I personally don't agree with, with recruiting duty being called an individual duty. Because when you put the when you put the words individual duty on it, it makes you act like an individual. And your whole entire time you've been in the Marine Corps, you've been told not to act like an individual. So when you have this office, everyone's like, no, nah, that's mine. That kid's mine. That's mine. That's this. That's this. But it's like, okay, well, maybe, maybe this kid that I sat down with, maybe he's better off sitting down with you. Maybe... You know, yeah, I made all the phone calls. I did all the stuff, but maybe me and him, our relationship isn't the best and we don't have the same rapport and we don't, we don't relate to each other. Maybe it's better that he goes over to Turner. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem is that I, is you have with recruiting duty is that you have Marines from all over the Marine Corps that get thrown from all different MOSs that get thrown together and say, Hey, you got to go work together for the next three years. Mm-hmm. And you're all from different climates, all different cu- cultures, and then you're told it's an individual duty. Well, no. What if we said, hey, listen, it's just a fucking duty. You're a Marine. Make shit happen. Don't go. be an individual. Have a team and everybody come together. Hey, man, I got the MEPS run. Hey, man, I'll go get those docs. I'm going to be in that area anyways. I'll get the docs for you. But it becomes this, this cycle of competition of I want to be better than him or I want to be better than you. And the same thing, you got staff and COICs that just want to make an example out of somebody. It's like, why? Or, you know, or you, or you have staff and COICs that want to get promoted, that want to get up top and they just start riding on your coattails. And, you know, you know, I remember, I, and I said this to somebody before this dude, um, a close friend of mine, he was like, yeah, 84 12s are the mission makers. And I was like, no, no. Like, bro, where were you at? You know, where were you at when I was at the office at 11 o'clock making phone calls, getting kids? You were at home. Where were you at, you know, when we were doing this, this, and the third? You were at home. So for you to sit here and be like, oh, we're the mission makers, it's like, ah, not really, bro. Because it's the 84, it's like in the Marine Corps. What does the Lance Corporal do? What is it? the Marine Corps is the Lance Corporal. Yes, sir. And with all due respect to anybody who's listening to this podcast, guess what an 8411 is? It's a senior Lance Corporal, bro. That's it. Like you're literally somebody who, whether you're a sergeant, staff sergeant, gunny, you're literally somebody who's been put into a brand new MOS that you know nothing about and you have to figure it the fuck out. Mm-hmm. And that's and, and in my opinion, that's a big problem with the duty is that so many people come out here so heavy headed, like, oh, I've done this. I've done that. I am this. It's like, bro, that doesn't mean anything here. No, stay humble. And that's and, and talking to you. And that's kind of why me and you always, you know, when we did see each other, you know, because like, you know, you know, how many times did we get deep into training? And I was the only one standing up in front of everybody actually conducting the training. <laughs> pretty much every time <laughs> you know what I mean like and it was and, and that was what bothered me is like going back to what I said before is that people get exposed and you know that this person ain't doing nothing but the whole command is okay with it yeah they're like yeah but they're making mission though it's okay it's okay that he doesn't go to work it's okay he don't show up but they're making mission and and it becomes this behind the scenes thing where bitterness comes, animosity comes, and it's like, bro, no, that's a cancer. You need to get rid of him because the reason why people aren't working or the reason why people slowly slow down is because they have no reason to fight anymore. You know, if going back to that recruiter I was talking about, if he's, if he's trying to write all these contracts and he wants to go on a board and he wants to do all this stuff, but you're giving his contracts away, well, then now what do you think he's going to do? He ain't going to work for you. 
he's yes. not going to work for nobody. And then if he goes to the command, the talk to the command, and the command says, now nah, we got you, and then nothing happens, okay, well, now after command. Same thing. It's, man, it's, it's, it's different, man. It's, it's different. You know, it, it, it's a struggle all around. The same conversation, same topics that me and you talking about right now, we had in our office, 11, 12 at night, same thing. And it's a, it's a cancer. It's continuous, man, and it needs to get fixed. If it don't get fixed, at the end of the day, man, our kids or uh, or our, well, our kids, I'm gonna say that they we won't have a good outcome. At the end of the day, you get what I'm saying. And it, it affects both in the recruiters as well as them. You know, it, it starts with us. Just like I used to tell my kids when they sit down uh, in my in my office, man. Charity begins at home. This is home. We need to yeah. fix, man. Yeah. You know, Clean shop. You need to be at the head and work your way down. But yep. something that it gives. Yeah. So, yeah. This dude. Yeah. And that's the thing too is I remember this dude um, that I was a recruiter with when I was working in Atlantic City, and the way that he would portray himself or the way that he would act, the police would see it, and the police would be like, "Yo, you good?" And then, and the thing is, is that like when we're talking about family and we're talking about product knowledge and we're talking about with these kids, what does it show anybody who walks in the office at nine, 10 o'clock at night that you're still there? Mm. Like, what does that show these parents to the, hey, you're telling me that you love family, but I see that on your desk, you got a picture of you and your kids, but you're, you're at work at 11 o'clock at night, mm-hmm. you know? You're out here talking to me at Walmart at 11 o'clock at night or at Wawa or wherever. Where's your family at? Mm-hmm. Why are you still here? And, and that's the thing is that we talk about being this one thing, but the reality of it is, is that we're not even being that. You know, you have all these people who come out on the duty and they're like, hey, I'm going to be different than the last guy. And, you know, your family matters to me and this matters to me and this matters to me. Your rank matters to me. And it's like, but what are we doing to change that? What are we doing to to help that? You know, like we got we got we had a we had that um that woman you know who was the she wasn't the family readiness officer she was the um I forget what it's called but that woman who would go office to office to office yes, and she yes. would talk to you guys and the Marine Corps said hey we don't have the money the funds for it so we got rid of it bro that woman helped a lot of people. Facts. You know, a lot, a lot of people enjoyed having that woman come to the office and talk to people and people don't, and everyone, you know, and then you have people who are like, oh, well, you know, hey, I always have an open door policy. No, you don't. Mm. No, you don't. Because if I come to you, guess what? My staff at COIC is going to say, hey, why'd you go to Sergeant Major? Because immediately, as soon as I walk into headquarters, everybody's going to see that I'm in headquarters. So then they're going to get back to you. So now I don't even have somebody outside of my command that I can go and talk to about life because I'm too focused on work. I'm too focused on contracting. I'm too focused on shipping. And that's why you have this, this animosity built. And then, and then you have recruiters who come out on the duty and they see Sergeant Turner and they're like, yo, that dude works so hard, but he's still here till 11 o'clock at night. Why am I going to even bother? And then they put their feet up and they don't bother. Because to their left and to their right, they see two polar opposites. They see Sergeant Turner busting his ass, and then they look to their left, and they see Sergeant so-and-so who hasn't written a contract in a year, but he's still here. So if I'm going to still stay in the Marine Corps and do nothing, and then I'm going to be out the Marine Corps doing everything, mm-hmm. Then why am I, why am I going? And that, and the answer to that question is because you're going to be who you are, no matter what you're going to be, who you are, who you were destined to be, who you've been created to be by your family, by the Marine Corps, who you've been molded as your leaders. You're going to continue to be that person because if you're the person to the left, you've always been that person. Mm -hmm. If you're the person to the right, you've always been that person because that's just who the fuck you are. And that's the, that right there is it is there's so many people that come on and that's why, you know, when we have this conversation, 
about quality of life is in my personal opinion, quality of life will never exist because you're always going to have the guy on the left and the guy on the right. You're going to have the dude who don't give a fuck and you're going to have the dude on the right who cares too much. And then that dude gets burnt out because he he's the one that everybody keeps coming to. Like you said, hey, Turner, we could move you, but we can't. Pitiful. And not only that, even if you get off day magically, you always have that job on your mind. Man, mm-hmm. you always, everywhere you go, even though you don't know you do it, you always, always oh, prosper. Yeah. Hey, you see, oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I need to go talk to that guy. I need to go do this. Oh, man. It's Saturday. I'm laying down. So I'm in the bed. It's 10 at night. Hey, man, I need something for Monday. What can I get? What can I get? Bro, it's an addiction, bro. Yeah, it is yeah. a it is an addiction, bro. And um, you know, to the point where, bro, I was on I was on recruiting duty. I was in the hospital with my wife. My wife was giving birth to my son. And I was on the phone with ops. Yo, Matt Soren, did my kid contract yet? And he's like, yo, re- worry about the kid coming out of your wife, bro. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I will yeah. once he's good. I'm like, once yeah. he clears, I'm good. And you know, and that was the thing, man, is that. You know, same thing with my daughter. Bro, I was in, in the hospital with my, do- with my daughter during the height of COVID. I'm, I'm a staff at COIC. I'm on the phone with ops. I got five kids on deck. I'm trying to make sure that all my kids are going to be cleared. And, and the gunny, you know, to this day, I thank you for it, the gunny rod. He was like, Bennett, hang the fuck up the phone. If you call me again, I'm blocking your fucking number. He said, yeah. stop calling me. You're at the hospital with your newborn baby. Just shut the fuck up, bro. Leave me alone. But the problem is there isn't enough gunnery sergeant Rodriguez is on recruiting duty mm. because the CEO was I right with it. The CEO was calling me while I was in the hospital. Hey, why didn't you make phase line? Wow. Bro, I'm, at, bro, I'm yeah. in the hospital with my daughter being born and you're asking me about why I didn't make phase line. Like. Beautiful, man. <laughs> and you know, and 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 again, it's you know, and again, it's it's that thing, you know, it's that the the thing where you know, it's you know, you would like to think that this person, and I had someone say this to me, they were like, you know what, he was probably a phenomenal officer outside of recruiting duty, mm-hmm. but recruiting duty changes people, and I was like, I don't know, man, you know, I think it's, I, and and that's why again, it's you know, we got to be who we are no matter what, whether we're yeah. wearing the uniform whether we're a father, whether we're a parent, and that's what it is, man. Like you said, when you come out on this duty, people learn real quick who you are, and you do too, because there's no more, you know, you're, you're a sergeant and or above, and there's no more other people doing your job for you. Mm-hmm. Nobody can go find kids for you besides you. And that's why, like myself, I never agreed with giving somebody a contract because then they're never going to learn how to do it. They're yeah. never going to learn how to do it. The kid's not going to be there. They're not going to care about the pool card. They're not going to care about the kid. They're not going to care if the kid ships. So if you don't, and that's the only part where I would agree that it's an individual duty is because of that one piece, but the mm-hmm. rest of it, it got to be a family, bro. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, man, you're right. It has to, um, it has to be a family at the end of the day, you know, because of man, let, let, let's say me and you in the office, all right, you was you was killing it last month. This month, man, your buck is drying up. Next month, your buck is drying up, and now, now I'm starting to see it really affect you as far yeah. as your mental state. Oh man, where's Ben? Oh, Ben is late today. Oh, hey, what's going on? Hey man, check the Ben's numbers. Oh man, he ain't hitting his numbers. Yo, what's going on? And you just see it all over you. You know what I'm saying? That's when that that brotherhood comes together hey man don't worry about it bro i've been there i got you i got yeah. you yeah man hey you know what hey i'll go through your working file hey I, I hey i'm gonna go back 90 days i'm gonna call this list for you you know what i'm saying hey i'll find you something bro don't worry about it you know what i'm saying hey man yeah. or eating or not or not even that hey bennett go home come back monday hey go yeah. spend time with man come in the office hey what's going yeah. on yeah yeah okay. You have how your family, how your wife, yeah, yeah. how you help yeah. them. Well, and that's it. And that, and I love that you brought that up because, like, I remember when I went to staff and so I see course, 
they talk to you about bridging the gap. They teach you about MC4 and they teach you about all this stuff. And I'm not knocking it. I believe it's a great opportunity. I believe it's a great skill. But this is where I hate it because when you start getting, you know, think about when you when you had a conversation with an 8412, right? People will always say, yo, you just got MC4, bro. Yo, you just got MC3, bro. And it's like, it's it's effed up because, bro, why can't we just have a normal sit-down conversation about reality? Why can't we just talk about my family because you genuinely give a fuck about my family? Mm-hmm. Why can't we, you not not trying to find a motivator, not trying to find, not trying to build rapport with me. Just talk to me because you actually want to ensure that you're invested in my life and you want to invest in my child's life and my family's life. Because you actually want to make sure that at the end of the day, if everything is okay at home, and that you've done everything to help me. And mm-hmm. that's where, like you said, it becomes a, a family thing because there's so many times where shit's going on in the office and you forget about what it feels like. And that's the thing. That's why I started this podcast is because you, while you're in an office of five or four people, there can be times where you feel so alone and you're like, bro, I, like you, you think you're the first time, like when you write your first nut, you feel like you're the only person that's ever written the nut. And you're like, bro, I can't believe, and you're in the lowest place ever. You're like, I failed, I did shitty, I did this. But if somebody was to come up to you and be like, bro, like, dude, I've been there. Like, yeah. I've, bro, I've been there. And then the next month, the next four months, I wrote back. Like, bro, it's okay. This too shall pass. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is that nobody wants to come on the duty and talk about, hey, this is what I've been through. And this is how I got through it. Like I said this to my boy at all hands, you know, why do we not talk about this shit at all hands? Hey man, what's working for you? What have you had issues with? How did you get through it? But nobody ever wants to talk about it. Nobody, we, everybody wants to bitch about it, but nobody wants to talk about, Hey, how can we collectively as an RS be better and help each other? Yep. They don't, they don't. And, and- I found myself doing what, what you were just saying. So I, I would give an example. I remember when I first got, I think it was Sarno Tease at the time. Um, starting off a little slow, then he started writing, writing, writing. Uh, I think he would write twos and threes, maybe a one, two, three, and a one. And then he started writing zeros, zeros. And, you know, his, his motivation starting to drop. He's starting to sink. You get what I'm saying? So I took him aside, man. I was like, yo, bro, hey, I've been there. You know, and I gave him my example. When I first got out here, my first month, I wrote, I wrote a four. Second month, a four. Third month, a two. And then I went three months. Zero, zero, zero. Their first month, Gunner Brown gave me, gave me a pass. Uh, Tana, you, you're good. Have something for next month. Bro, you just did his accent amazing, bro. I thought, bro, I thought he just hopped on the line real quick. <laughs> but that that second month, horrible, horrible. I think even, even though I had kids on deck, they all didn't make it, whatever reason. Yeah. The third month, same thing, zero. And I started getting down. I think at the time, the CEO was, um, uh, I can't remember his name. Tall yep. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, Turner, when you got out here, he was like an asteroid. He said, now you're starting to flicker, going out, you're going out, flicker. And that messed with me. It stuck with me the whole time. And then I started writing again, 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 again. But it's like you said, man, you know, every now and again, every now and again you know, we're going to need that pick me up, you know, that shoulder. Hey, man, don't worry about it. Shake it off. It's just like a football player making a bad play. Shake it off. Yeah. That's what you get what I'm saying. But yeah, man, it's, it just got to bounce back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so now that you're um, done with recruiting duty, done with the Marine Corps, outside the Marine Corps, um, what's my question would be, how did the three years on recruiting duty help you? What did it, how, how did it help you mentally, physically? How did it help you change, change as a person? And then what's next, what's next for Turner? Man, so 
Oh, how should I say, man? It enhanced, I would say, as far as my skills, as far as my people skills, if, if that makes sense, man. It gave me more of a, a wide range of new avenues to take, you know. Um, coming off of recruiting, dude, I didn't know that I'm a, I was, my new career path now is going into the HR field. You know, uh, kind of find out that even though I hated recruiting duty, I was good at it. And I grew to love it because of the kids that I helped. You know what I'm saying? The, the parents, the relationships is one of the main things, you know. Um, so honestly, man, that's, that's really where I'm leaning towards now. Um, I mean, getting out, man, it was hard at first. I would say the main difference for me, probably a lot of other, I would say, veterans who got out in the military going back to the civilian sector, uh, pay scale, man, major difference. Major, major difference. But other than that, man, you know, it, recruiting duty taught me, man, that if I, can, if I can come out of recruiting duty successful, successful tour duty, man, everything else that I face, bro, it's going to be a breach. Regardless, Big T going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Big T gonna make it. You know, ain't nothing out here that's going to stop my grind. Uh, so, you know, I'm hustling right now, man. I'm in, I'm in school, going to school for uh, – uh, HR human resources. Um, got a good job out here in Virginia, you know, working hard. Uh, so I'm still kind of in the government field right now. So pretty much I um, I'm uh, uh, building uh, Navy ships um, at the, the Newport News ship building out here. So that's my way of still kind of giving back uh, to the Marines and, and, and the sailors, you know, um, my still way of still kind of serving, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. No but doubt, I, man. I'm out. You know, it was bittersweet once I got those got those papers in my hand. You know, but you know, it's, um, I got more time with my family. That's that's one of the main things right now. Yeah, yeah. Very I feel good. the same way, bro. I man. feel the same way, man. Like I love, I love recruiting duty. I love being on active duty, but it's a breath of fresh air. Yeah, you know, being able to wake up. I don't got a mission letter on my back. I don't got the CO calling me. I don't got command members calling me. Like, bro, I was when I started my job. I, I'm in sales, and I was updating my boss every day with numbers, with contracts, with this, with that. And she literally was like, "Doug, stop it. Leave me alone." Yeah. She was like, unless, <laughs> she literally was like, listen, unless I call you and I ask you for your numbers, I don't care. Yeah. She was like, stop bothering me. And and I even told when I was on the phone with the VA, I told I, I, would, I felt weird saying this, but it was the reality of it. I was like, bro, when my boss's phone, when I get a call from my boss, I, I'm overcome with anxiety yeah. that yeah. like I got to I have an I have to. I, like I, I'm about to get in trouble. Like I got to explain why this person did this and why this person didn't do this. And then all of a sudden she's on the other line. Like, Hey, I was just calling to see how you were doing and, and say, thank you. And, and I'm just like, what the, like, it's cra It's just nuts, man. It's just, it's just crazy, bro. So, um, I want to thank you, man, for coming on here, bro. I really appreciate you. Um, if if and when I'm in Virginia, bro, I'm going to definitely hit you up, bro, so we can get oh, together yeah. with family. And, um, again, bro, I thank you so much, man, for coming on here because, bro, it's one of those things, man. Like, I only literally probably had, like, four, this is probably – this actually is the longest conversation the two of us have ever had together. Um, but I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing your story. Um, you know, I definitely look forward to talking to you more about different things. I look forward to seeing what you're doing out there in the civilian world now. And, um, and just thank you so much for coming on here, man. Hey, no worries, brother. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, it's good to see you again. And like I said, man, to the, to the ones that's listening, that's coming on recruiting duty, hey, grind. Make goals for yourself. Set goals, man. Take the good with the bad. Yeah, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. But once you get out there and you learn your sector, you learn what what, what works for you, what, and and use your personality, man. Be be yourself. If you the the 
the Game of Thrones, the Dungeon and Dragons kind of person, use that. You know what I'm saying? But if you like me from the country, big country, hey, use that. You know, uh, uh, product knowledge. You've been in the Marine Corps probably four plus years, man. That that stuff will come. You know, but the main thing is don't look at it as a business. It's about the product that you put in, the guys and girls that you help. You get what I'm saying? Do your due diligence. Somebody gave you the opportunity. So do the same for them, but you do it better. Those girls and guys that you invested all this time in, calling, finding documents, going to their houses, graduations, you putting the time in, so so make so do it right, so and so you can have a good outcome, so they can have a good outcome. Make them better than you. At the end of the day, that's it. Amen, brother. All right, that couldn't have ended on a better note. I appreciate you, brother. I hope you have a good rest of the day. I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. Peace. Be Thanks easy, a lot, bro. bro. You too, brother.